Hi, thank you for joining us for this four-part video series on MQTT's PowerPlug. This is Raju and I'm an IoT Specialist Solution Architect with AWS. In this series, we'll talk about MQTT's PowerPlug and understand how you can use this standard for discovering your assets automatically and to ingest data into AWS IoT SiteWise. Now we'll start with an intro on AWS IoT SiteWise and talk about the SparkPlug standard and see how you can use it with a marketplace product called IoT Bridge for SiteWise. And finally, we'll do a demonstration and then summarize the key takeaways. AWS IoT SiteWise is a fully managed service that helps industrial customers collect organize and analyze data from their assets. You can ingest data from equipment like PLCs using wide variety of protocols including OPC and MQTT. Next, you can model your assets and compute performance metrics such as overall equipment effectiveness across all manufacturing sites. Further, you can create dashboards and visualize live and historical data from your assets using web-based dashboards. Finally, you can leverage all these capabilities in an offline mode so you can run your site operations without depending on cloud connectivity. Next, let's talk about MQTT SparkPlug. Let's start with a question. Why do we need MQTT SparkPlug? To answer that, we need to revisit the MQTT standard. The MQTT standard doesn't really talk about how a namespace and payload should be implemented. And these details are left out intentionally to really offer flexibility across different industries. While flexibility is generally considered good, lack of a standard way of creating topics and payloads makes it really difficult to achieve interoperability across different products. Now SparkPlug specification tackles this challenge for industrial IoT by providing a standard way of defining topics, state management and payloads. Now let's look at each of these three areas starting with the topic namespace. The spec provides semantics to standardize how topics are created. Here is a structure that shows various segments that makes up a typical topic. The namespace indicates payload encoding and the group ID represents a group of devices. And the message type represents different type of messages, including whether it's a data or a command message. Finally, the node ID represents nodes that provide local protocol interface to devices and the device ID represents the individual device itself, like a PLC, RTU or a sensor. Moving on to state management, the spec provides a mechanism for communicating state using the birth and death messages, which under the hood uses MQTT features like last will testament and keep alive. Finally, for the payload, the latest SparkPlug B definition uses Google protocol buffers or simply called protobuf to encode the messages. Protobuf is a popular messaging format that's bandwidth efficient, faster in encoding, decoding, and also comes with a stronger type system than JSON, for example. And now let's look at the different components that makes up a MQTT SparkPlug based infrastructure. At minimum, only two components are required. The MQTT server, which is basically MQTT broker, and then a SparkPlug edge of the network node, which is an MQTT client that offers a local protocol interface to devices like PLCs and RTUs. On the other hand, the primary host is a SCADA system that consumes the data and sends back commands to devices to control the operation. Finally, you can also have other host applications like MES historians to store and visualize the operational data. For this video, we'll use a marketplace product called IoT Bridge for SiteWise and show how you can use PowerPlug with IoT SiteWise. 
IoT Bridge reads Sparkplug compatible messages from your OT environment and translates them for IoT Sitewise. So using IoT Bridge, Sitewise can automatically discover assets in your OT environment and also ingest tag data in real time. Let's go to AWS Marketplace and look at the product. The product overview describes the product and also talks about the benefits of using it. Further below, you'll see the pricing and the usage information. As you can see, the product is delivered in two ways, either as AMI or as a CloudFormation template. In the interest of time, we'll use CloudFormation template because it also helps you to set up all the related components like the VPC, Internet Gateway, Elastic IP and so on. So we talked about IoT Bridge for Sitewise Marketplace product. Now let's see how it can translate asset models from source systems into IoT Sitewise. Here we have the data source to the left and IoT Sitewise to the right. In this example, we are using inductive automation's ignition system as our data source. So Ignition transmits these user-defined types as MQTT SparkPlug compatible messages. And IoT Bridge consumes these messages and then creates corresponding artifacts in IoT Sitewise, including asset model that represents class of an asset and then asset which is the asset itself and attribute that represents static data about the equipment like a serial number for example and then measurement to represent the time series data. So we talked about Sparkplug specification and the IoT Bridge Marketplace product. Now let us do a demo walkthrough to understand the end-to-end -end flow. For the demo walkthrough, let us take an industrial manufacturing facility with devices like PLCs and smart sensors. We'll have a Sparkplug Edge of Network node that connects to these devices and publishes MQTT Sparkplug messages to a cloud broker, which is AWS IoT Core. The IoT Bridge for Sitewise Marketplace product then consumes these messages and ingests data into AWS IoT Sitewise whether it's metadata like model information or telemetry. Finally, an operations user can access these dashboards available in IoT Sitewise and gain insights into their operations. So in this architecture pattern, we have the edge of network node directly talking to the cloud MQTT broker. But typically, in large manufacturing facilities, a local MQTT broker is used in between the edge of network node and the cloud MQTT broker. This is to reduce the latency and avoid dependency on cloud connectivity for critical operations. Here is a modified pattern where a local MQTT broker interfaces with the edge of network node and relays those messages to the cloud MQTT broker, which is AWS IoT Core. This local MQTT broker is provided as a pre-built component on AWS IoT Greengrass, which is a service that helps you build edge applications. So it's really easy to deploy and configure the local MQTT broker. So just to summarize what we've seen so far, in this video, we talked about AWS IoT Sitewise, MQTT SparkPlug, IoT Bridge for Sitewise. And we also went through a demo architecture. In the next video, we'll start building a solution using this architecture. Thank you for watching.